The next lesson in our thermochemistry unit is on heats of reaction. We have three learning targets for this set of videos. This uh, set is actually divided into two shorter videos. In this first one, we'll, we will only look at this first learning target. We want to use Hess's law to calculate the enthalpy change during a chemical reaction, which we call a heat of reaction. So let's take a look at what Hess's law is and why we need it. The, re the reason we need Hess's law is because it is impossible or at least impractical to measure the enthalpy change for many reactions. And note that the symbol that we would use for this would be the enthalpy change symbol delta H with the subscript Rxn for reaction. Recall commonly we, we would refer to that as a heat of reaction even though it is an enthalpy change. So in other words, we need a theoretical way to calculate this heat of reaction uh, for these reactions that where they are impossible or impractical to measure. So let's consider this reaction where we are reacting two moles of sulfur solid with some oxygen gas to give us sulfur trioxide gas. And we want to know what the enthalpy change is for this reaction or what we would call the heat of reaction. So you might say, well, let's just do the reaction and measure the, the energy change. That, that should be how we do that. Well, if we tried to do this reaction, that in order to measure that, it wouldn't work very well. Because if you were to do this, the reaction would result in a mixture of products, mostly of which are sulfur dioxide. And notice we are talking specifically about the reaction that produces sulfur trioxide. So performing the, the actual reaction doesn't do us a whole lot of good. So what we have to do then to, to, to determine this heat of reaction is to use Hess's law, which tells us the following. If you can add two or more equations from a chemical reaction to produce a final equation for a reaction, in other words, the one that we're looking for, this one here, then the sum of the enthalpy changes for the individual reactions is the enthalpy change for the final reaction. Now that's a mouthful, might not have a whole lot of meaning to you. I remember the first time I read that and was learning about it, I had no idea how to proceed, but it's really not too hard. I'm going to show you an example and then you'll get some practice of how to use this. So let's consider this reaction. This is just from the previous slide. This is the uh, reaction that we want to find this heat of reaction for. So in order to use Hess's law, we need to either be given or we need to look up some known values for heats of reaction for different reactions, but ones that involve these same substances. So we need reactions with known delta H values that contain these sorts of substances that you see here in the desired equation. And there are two that we need for this. They are as follows. We have solid sulfur reacting with oxygen to produce sulfur dioxide. That's actually the most common reaction that would occur if we tried to react these two. And the other one is the decomposition of the sulfur trioxide which notice is a product of the reaction we want, but it's a reactant here. And you can see we get sulfur dioxide and oxygen. And the important part about this is these enthalpy changes, the heats of reaction, are known for both of those reactions. So once we have those equations, and those would be ones that would typically just be given to you. Uh, if you didn't, if you weren't given those equations, you could look some up. But that's that can be quite a time-consuming process. So we basically just stick to what's given to us. So what we're going to do now is we're going to manipulate these equations that we're given so that whenever we add them together, the sum of, of those equations will equal this equation right here. Uh, now you might be saying, well, wait, how do I manipulate it? What does that mean? What can I do? Well, a couple of real basic ideas. Here's the first thing I want you to notice. If you look at our equation that we're trying to get to, I see sulfur as a solid here, as a reactant. The only place I see sulfur as a solid in my given equations is in, is in this first one. But do notice there's a difference. The equation we're looking for, we need two moles of it. In the equation we're given, there's only one mole. So what that tells me is I need to take this entire equation and multiply it by two because that will give me two moles of sulfur. So for that first equation, for that equation one, I just multiply it all by two. So notice it's still the same reaction, sulfur solid reacting with oxygen gas to give us sulfur dioxide, but now all these coefficients that were one have been doubled and they're all now two. Now remember, 
doing that does not change the balancing of the equation any. It's still a balanced equation. However, what will change is the energy changes that occur. Notice our delta H value, the heat of reaction, was at negative 297 kilojoules. It's now at negative 594 kilojoules. It had to double because we had now have twice as much reaction. So twice as much energy is going to be released. Uh, a quick note here about the, the signs on these heats of reaction. Uh, do notice that we do have positive and negative values. The negative values, these would be exothermic because they are releasing heat, releasing energy. In other words, the products have less energy than the reactants. The ones that have positive values for the heats of reaction, like you see the second one does here, and we do explicitly put the plus sign there. I know mathematically it doesn't have to be there. This is just very common with thermochemical equations. Uh, we put the plus sign there specifically to show that it is endothermic. In other words, we have to absorb energy to make this happen. All right, so as far as this first equation is concerned, we're done with it. There's nothing else we need to do uh, because we have the right substance, the sulfur, on the correct side of the equation because I see it needs to be a reactant, and I have the right number of moles. It has two moles of sulfur here. We need two moles there. So when I look at my target equation again, uh, I'll notice I have oxygen here as a reactant, and I see oxygen in both of these uh, given equations. So that's one I, I don't really want to worry about if I don't have to. So I'm going to take a look at this last one here, the sulfur trioxide. When I notice about that, and we mentioned it when the equation popped up, the only equation that has the sulfur trioxide is this second given one, but it's on the wrong side of the equation. I need it to be a product, but here it's a reactant. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to reverse this equation. I'm going to make my products uh, reactants and my reactants products, and that is perfectly legitimate because reactions can happen both directions. Uh, there's nothing that says that can't happen. The only thing that will change is that our sign is going to change because if this reaction here is endothermic, the reverse reaction must be exothermic. So I'm going to take this second equation and I'm just going to reverse it where my products, my sulfur dioxide and oxygen, are now reactants. So notice they're on the left side of the equation. My products, so this is just the sulfur trioxide, excuse me, this is my reactant. My reactant, which was on the left side, is now on the right side. And notice our heat of reaction has gone from endothermic being positive to exothermic being negative. All right, so I'm now in a position where I can add these together because if I do, I should get this same equation that I'm looking for. So when we add these together, this is just like you would add any two equations in math. You just add them al algebraically. Notice that the sulfur dioxide, SO2, now appears on both sides of the equation, and there's two moles of both of them. This is just like having 2x on, on either side of equations when you add them together. Just like you would do in math class, they cancel. Okay, and then also notice I have oxygen that appears uh, in both equations, but these are on the same side. So these are just add algebraically. I have two moles here uh, plus the one mole from the second reaction, so that will give me three moles. Which notice, that's exactly what our target equation needs anyway. So when I add these together, I have two moles of sulfur on my reactant side. I have three moles of oxygen, because two plus one is three. And then I have two moles of the sulfur trioxide, which you'll notice is exactly what we were looking for here. And then to get the heat of reaction, I just add up these two heats of reaction from the equations that I added. So the negative 594 kilojoules plus the negative 198 kilojoules gives us a heat of reaction or an enthalpy change of negative 792 kilojoules, which tells us that reaction is exothermic. It will release 792 kilojoules of energy upon completion. All right. You've seen an example, and I do know it was just one example. I have some for you to practice. If at any point you need to uh, play the video again as you're trying it to get some more help, please do. Uh, but once you've read the question here, go ahead and pause it. See if you can try to do this yourself. And if you need help, go ahead and play the video and see how I solved it. So this first one here, we're asked to determine the heat of reaction, exactly what we just did, for the following reaction using Hess's law and the known heats of reaction given. So here's our target equation. Uh, we have two moles of nitrogen monoxide gas reacting with oxygen gas to produce two moles of nitrogen dioxide gas, and we do not know that enthalpy change, that heat of reaction. We are given two known equations, just like we, learned, just like we were in the previous one, 
and and so we need to be able to manipulate these in order so that when we add them together we get this so again the first thing we're going to do and i would just encourage you to find substances that appear in only one of these uh, given equations and then match them up with where they need to go in the target equation so for example i need there to be two moles of nitrogen monoxide no on the reactant side the only place nitrogen monoxide appears anywhere in these two given equations is in the first one it's on the product side you'll also notice that there aren't enough moles of it where i need two moles of nitrogen monoxide but there's only one here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to reverse this first equation i'm going to make the products reactants and the reactants products but i'm also going to multiply uh, the equation by two so i can get two moles of nitrogen monoxide so this first one i'm going to reverse it and i multiply it by two and when i do that my, my coefficients all double so i did have one mole of nitrogen monoxide and now i have two moles of nitrogen monoxide and that's not a reactant because i reversed it and then my two reactants my nitrogen and oxygen gas are now products and notice those coefficients have also been multiplied by two you might have noticed here these fractions in the equations and, and you might be wondering if that's okay why why are they that way well as we have learned uh, there's multiple ways to balance any equation um, and, and we do tend to like there to be whole numbers however with these thermochemical equations that that involve these heats of reaction and that sort of thing it is very very common for them to always be written with just one mole of a product and so sometimes you will see fractions uh, used to balance the equations to achieve that uh, doesn't mean that they aren't uh, aren't balanced notice here on just this first equation I have half a mole of N2 so one half times two is one nitrogen atom there I have one nitrogen in my product so it is in fact balanced I know it does look a little different from what you might have expected but anyway back to solving this problem so I now have my nitrogen monoxide in the right position uh, because I have two moles of nitrogen monoxide on my reactant side here uh, the oxygen I'm going to try to ignore for now just because I see oxygen in both of these equations. So if I don't have to worry about manipulating that one, I, I will, I'll try not to just because it's more difficult. So I'll look at my nitrogen dioxide here, the NO2. And again, I notice the only place NO2 appears is in the second equation, and it is on the correct side. However, do notice there isn't enough of it. I need two moles of NO2, I only have one mole here, so I'm going to multiply this second equation by two. So for the second equation, I simply multiply all the coefficients by two. So notice I did have half of a mole of N2, and I now have one mole of N2. I did have one mole of O2, and I now have two moles of O2. And I did have one mole of NO2, I now have two moles of NO2. And if you're looking at uh, how these equations are going to fit together when we add them, you should start to notice that, that I am done at this point. If I add these together, uh, notice I have nitrogen that appears on both sides, one mole of each, so that's going to cancel, which is good because if I look at my, my target equation, I don't want the N2 in there. And then the oxygen, you'll notice it does appear on both sides, but it does not come completely cancel because I have one mole of O2 on the right side but I have two moles on the left side so you think algebraically about adding like terms if I were to move this O2 from the right side to the left side I would subtract it and that would cancel the one mole of O2 from the right and that would leave me with just one on the left in other words the two would cancel I'd only have one and you'll notice my equation has now been solved when I add these together I will get my target equation uh, last point here before we go on to the next example uh, remember whenever we manipulate the equations for example this first one I, I reversed it and I multiplied it by two uh, notice my enthalpy change went from a positive 91.3 to a negative value because it's going the opposite direction and it doubled so it went from positive 91.3 to negative 182.6 kilojoules likewise the second one we simply doubled, so that went from 33.2 to 66.4. It just doubled. And then when I add these together, I get my negative 116.2 kilojoules. All right, next example. Same deal. I give you an equation. Uh, you can see it here. Uh, I would encourage you to pause the video at this point. Try it yourself. Actually, you shouldn't pause it yet because you need to see these. 
Uh, here are the given equations. So now I try pausing the video. Try it yourself. If you need some help, go ahead and play the video and see how you did. All right, so this one might look more complicated simply because we're given three equations, three reactions here to work with, but nothing changes. We're going to go through each of our substances in the target equation, identify where they are in the given equations and how we need to manipulate them uh, to, to achieve our target equation. So our sulfur trioxide, the SO3, the only place it appears in these given equations is in the first one and it's on the wrong side. It's on the product side. I need it on the reactant side. But it, it does it does have the right number of moles. There is one mole there. So all I'm going to do for this first equation is I'm simply going to reverse it. Uh, where I've taken my product SO3, I've made it a reactant. I've taken my reactant, sulfur, and oxygen. I've made them products. And then notice the sign change on the enthalpy change. It was exothermic, meaning negative. Now it's endothermic, meaning positive. All right. So for the next one, I see I have water here as a reactant. And again, the only place I see water anywhere in my given equations is in the second reaction, and it's on the wrong side. It's a product. But just like the SO3, there, it does have the right number of moles. So I'm just going to uh, reverse this second equation. I'm not going to multiply by anything because I have the right number of moles already. So that gives me my water as my reactant and then the hydrogen and the half mole of oxygen as my products. And then again, notice the sign change. It went from exothermic, meaning negative, heat of reaction to endothermic, meaning positive. And then for this last one, notice the sulfuric acid, that's the H2SO4, uh, only appears in the last equation. It's on the correct side of the equation, means it's a product, and it has the right number of moles. So there's absolutely nothing I need to do to this third equation. I just need to use it as is. So I'll just write it again down here, just as you see it appearing up here. And then I can, uh, and thus it'll be the same uh, heat of reaction, the negative 814. Now I can look to add these together and cancel what's going to cancel. So when I add these, you'll notice I have one mole of hydrogen on each side, so that's going to cancel. And then my oxygen, this looks a little different than what you might have expected. Uh, you'll notice that here on the right side I have three halves of a mole plus half a mole of O2. That would be two moles on the right side. Well, that's going to cancel with the two moles on the left side. And then I also have one mole of sulfur on each side. Uh, reactant and product, those will cancel, which looks like I didn't get in any uh, uh, canceling marks there. But you can see how they would cancel. The product and the reactant would cancel. So that leaves us with one mole of sulfur trioxide as a reactant, one mole of water as a reactant, and one mole of hydro, uh, sulfuric acid as a product, which is our target equation. And so now I just add up these enthalpy changes and we will get a negative 73.7 kilojoules for that heat of reaction. All right, that completes the first video in this uh, two video series on these heats of reaction. You can see the learning targets for the uh, for the next video, really what, what these do is they allow us to, to use Hess's Law but in a more efficient manner uh, where we don't necessarily have to manipulate these equations uh, to get what we're looking for.